And we're live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of Wondergraph Show and Tell, where we're back with our latest update in an unedited, unscripted edition, where we present what we did in the last week's sprint. This last week's sprint was insane. I think it's going to be super exciting what we present today. We have a lot of cool updates coming, such as Apollo Federation V2, Open tele uh, Telemetry. I don't know how to pronounce this. So I'll just say Otel. <laughs> it gets stuck on my tongue. And then we have Prometheus and Logging. And today's schedule, we have Otel presented by Dustin and Nathan and Prometheus presented by Alberto with a little bit of logging in there too. Right, Alberto? I have a Oops, muted. sorry. You got me with the mute. Yeah, that's right. And we'll be showing both of them at the same time because, you know, they are somehow related, you know, and they allow you to do cool stuff that you couldn't do before. So Love yeah. that. Okay, cool. So let's get right into it. So let's start with Otel by Dustin and Nathan. So let me bring up your screen, Dustin. Yeah. Hi. So in a couple of weeks, we worked very hard on Otel instrumentation in the Wunder node and also in the cloud as well. So as a brief overview, what is Otel? It, it allows you to instrument your application with traces to, yeah, to get a better understanding of how your application behaves, what's what are the dependencies? What is the performance? And uh, yeah. So let me demonstrate a very simple uh, use case. Uh, we have in the monorepo created a get weather operation. It will call two, two uh, operations of your virtual graph. Let's say I want to get the weather of Berlin. I want to uh, by purpose throw an error in a TypeScript operation to return 404. So let's call this operation with open telemetry enabled. Let's start it. And then I need to switch the screen again. Otherwise, you will see my 38 inch screen and it will be very tiny. <laughs> uh, yeah. So let's switch to Jaeger. So open telemetry is, is supported by Jaeger, I think since, since months. So here you see an example trace. Let's call an endpoint, get weather, and update it. You see, a few seconds ago. And now you see uh, we have sent traces to, to Jaeger in the open telemetry specification. And this tool can uh, yeah, visualize the traces. You see, for example, this is uh, the, the primary, primary request to the Wunder node router. And then it will make a function call against the Wundergraph server. And then we also instrument the operations client that is responsible to make the the sub sub calls to your virtual graph. You can see the performance impact. You see uh, what what what's the exact call of it. What's the request URL? Uh, and you see here we we throw an error by by purpose, and it's also marked as such. You can see the stack trace, you see the error name, everything you need to know to get a better understanding of what's going on. So this is this is just the the way how you can do it yourself if you want to. A lot of companies use Jaeger or Zipkin, but if you use Vonagraph Cloud, you get an even better visualization. You, you get auto instrumentation out of the box without doing anything so yeah I, I think I will hand over to Nathan how and he will demonstrate uh, how it will look like and yeah cool so now we're gonna see how it looks in Wondergraph cloud so Nathan give it a second to render okay you're sure. good to yep uh, so uh, for those who don't want to use Jaeger or other tools and are hosting on our platform we have open telemetry built in with the UI and everything. If you head over to our demo organization as usual uh, and go to our Apollo Federation example, you can see a new tab here called tracing. And if you head over, uh, we have already made requests with this project and you can see the traces that have been produced. Let me click on, you can filter by operation and uh, duration and also by a specific trace ID if you do have it. Uh, very, looking. very important. Sorry to interrupt you, but very important is because you mentioned this, the the search trace ID. For every mm -hmm. request uh, against the Wunagraph Cloud, you also get an X trace ID response header, header back, which you can use to filter here for for the for the trace. Just mm -hmm. being said, okay. Yeah. 
yeah so now let me just choose a specific uh, trace to go to and here as you can see you can look at the dependency graph uh, as to what network calls have happened and if you uh, scroll down you can also see the uh, gan chart of all the traces and the spans and you can see the duration of how long it took for it to finish and if you click on any one of them you can see all the attributes you can see the http url the status code and what not and you can collapse it what not uh, and everything and yeah so this is a pretty interactive and uh, let's say a more attractive ui i would say than yeager and yeah and it's all built into cloud and if you also go to the operations tab and if you click on any operation if you have made any request along with all the analytics that you can see we can also directly view the traces and we automatically filter it by that specific operation and the time period that you had over there so yeah everything plays really well with each other and yeah i feel that this is really mind blowing it, it really it. is it looks beautiful the ui looks amazing and yep. i'm excited is this available today people can start interacting with it now yeah it's already live and it's already deployed as well even the demo org so all, all you need to do is sign into cloud and head over here we're going to make a specific video just on this feature so great job dust and great job nithin next up we have Alberto, Mr. Senior, software engineer, presenting Prometheus and Login. Take it away. Senor. Hello. Thanks for having me, Stefan. So, yeah, uh, besides Open Telemetry, we went ahead and we decided that we wanted another monitoring solution and better login because, you know, some users were asking for it and we thought it was pretty reasonable. So, I will start with Prometheus. Uh, Prometheus support is built in, you don't have to do anything to enable it, it's enabled by default. We have these two options that you can use to change the port or to disable, but it's running by default. You, oops, I broke it. <laughs> you don't need to touch anything. And by default, we lost some operations. If you want to check the raw metrics, you can send a request manually to Prometheus and you can see like the metrics here. But of course, you know, the best way to, to use this is to use the Prometheus uh, server and inspect the metrics and you can see it's incredibly cool all the things that you can see like you can see here we send some requests to, to different operations uh, and you can check the the latency for 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 them you know you can check like you can for example this is a Prometheus feature of course you know but, but you know i wanted to show this like how you can zoom into the operations and you can see sometimes it takes longer or sometimes intense it's faster because i send several requests in parallel to make the execution time change and you can see, for example, here we uh, to, to, here, for example, we had to oops, let me make it bigger to go to these ones because it was a while ago. Like here, you can zoom into this, and you can see we have two operations running in parallel. They were both executing at the same time, and this is super fast, and this is not as fast. It's still quite fast, you know. This is below half a, a millisecond, and you can also see a lot of cool stuff. Like you can see the the requests that were sent to, to uh, let me clear this. You can see the requests that were sent to the upstream APIs. You can see them, for example, you can filter the, the number of requests that you send to, to a given upstream. You can see the, the requests that, that go through that. You can see, for example, the yeah, the responses to your operations, like you can check uh, request total. You can check how many operations and then in a status code 200, they executed successfully. You can also see like operations that failed because they retarded at 400. And all of this is, is available right out of the box. You don't have to do anything. You got all these new metrics for you to understand your node better, to, to monitor your, your server. Uh, yeah, you can optimize so much with this. Like you, it, it became way, way easier now to do that. Um, beside this, you know, because we felt like even with open telemetry, even with Prometheus, we felt we could do slightly better. You know, even we could add something else on top. So we went and improved the the support for for logging. Uh, you were already able to use a uh, logger from several places, but um, we didn't have a properly specified interface. We were just exposing what 
the internal web server that we use expose it. So we went and we wrote a proper interface, a well-specified one. We documented everything. And I wanted to show you how you can use logs. Like from here, for example, this is an operation hook. But the very same thing is available, for example, in, in operations. Like if I go, for example, here, you can see I'm also using the log here. This is uh, um, even I could use that in a GraphQL, in the unembedded GraphQL server, like here, for example. If I wanted to use here, I can do ctx.gundergraph.log, and I have the very same log available here. And this is quite cool, you know, because it allows you to do extractor logging. Like you have to always provide a message, and this object is optional. You can just log the message. Um, if we now send a request, it is is this one yeah you can see here hello and it's including the the request id that i that i sent we do we do that by default like you can see here i said the request id to custom but here you can also you know specify more more data like say i, I have type before from hook and this gets oops so <laughs> this gets shown as as json Give it a few milliseconds to set up. Okay. As you can see now it shows. Oops, why it's not ah because I didn't save the file. Sorry about that. <laughs> I knew it was working, you know. It's unedited, remember that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you can see now here from hook, you know, and this is also quite cool. You can log errors, for example. Like let's say I got an error. Uh, something terrible happened. Um, when you log an error, you get all the details of the error. You can see here, like the, the whole, the, the type of the error, the whole stack, the error message. Uh, yeah, this allows you to do a lot of uh, logging that you can use later for debugging or, um, and yeah, like you could do that before, you know, but now it's properly specified. You get JSON logs, which are incredibly useful. Um, this also work with our cloud and, and also on your premises. So, so yeah, that is basically. Do you, do you also want to show the ch the child logger uh, extension? Ah, yeah, good idea, good idea. I, I liked it a lot. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I I, I like it too. You know, but I totally <laughs> so, so you can do like if you want to. Let's say you have several logs. Like let's say here you could have like a user, and you could do log info. And to, you want to attach like signing, for example, and you want to say user is admin, right? And then maybe later you do something else and you say user sign out. And here you are duplicating this this data. You know, what you want to be saying in both requests. So we added this API. As Justin reminded me, you can create a, a child logger that has these fields always attached. So now, if you do here child info instead of log info, you get the same result without having to look at the fields again because they are permanently attached to this to this logger. So if we do this and we send a request now, you should see here user admin, user admin info that we set it here. So yeah, thanks, Dustin, for reminding me. I had uh, so many things to talk about that I forgot about this important feature. So very cool. Good. So thank you. you. Oh, go ahead, Alberto. I know you did thing unscripted. <laughs> exactly. So that concludes another episode of Wondergraph Show and Tell. Before we head off, we do have two to three things that we want to talk about. So we've been doing AMAs every Friday. Uh, Two weeks ago, we had Dax from SST. That video is going live today on YouTube, so you can see it's edited, just getting the best clips from that whole session. And then last week, we had Matt, the CEO and founder of Netlify, which was an absolutely informing session. There were so many knowledge bombs dropped about funding, about building a company, about the hardships that Netlify went through. I'll be editing that and exposing it this week. It was a fantastic episode, so be on the lookout for that. And then two other announcements. One, Wondergraph is hiring again. We're hiring for a senior Golang engineer. You can check it out. I'll link it in the bottom of this video so you guys can apply. Um, and then the last thing is we have started a partnership with 
Taylor Tech, a YC-backed company, we are excited to announce that Apollo Federation V2, compatible OSS license gateway, that was a mouthful, <laughs> is coming to Wondergraph. So we're already supporting Apollo Federation V1 with our Golang-based engine. If you guys haven't seen that, that's GraphQL Go Tools. It's literally the heart and soul of Wondergraph. And now we found a partner to support Federation V2. So be on the lookout for that for a couple of weeks. We do have it in our banner, but we're also going to make a wait list so you can be notified. Once again, that concludes Wondergraph Show and Tell. Thank you guys again so much. Thank you, team, for joining me. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys.